Sean Williams checks in for Greg Monroe. And it's Jackson in for Caldwell Pope. The Pacers also changing it up. Lavoy Allen comes in for Mahimi. And it's West in for Luis Scola. And Meeks with his best season last year, but still probably best suited to a reserve. Room. Yeah, I think that's the case. He can shoot it. He competes at the defensive end. He's smart. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's not going to give you rebounding and playmaking, but what he gives you is pretty good. Jackson with it. George picks him up. Jackson kicks to Williams. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Well, you got to give the front office a lot of credit with the Pacers for what they put together. Without question, Kevin. You know, prevailing wisdom in the NBA was that to compete, you needed to either be a big market free agent destination or kind of tank for high draft picks. The Pacers kind of did it their own way, building solidly and steadily through the draft and with smart, true free agent acquisitions. The biggest one being David West a few years back. Oh, he's going to keep banging those home if you give him that much space. The kick outside to Butler. Pass to Meeks. The shot by Butler. Nobody around. Connects on the 17-footer. Butler's got six points. And the key for the Pacers in constructing this club has been finding terrific value in the draft. Boy, Hibbert drafted 17th, Paul George 10th. Even George Hill was acquired for the 15th pick, so very impressive. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Well, guys, David West is one of the most consistent guys in the entire NBA, not only with his production, but with his demeanor on a team. As Coach Frank Vogel said, West has poise and composure. He's our rock. There's no other way to put it. He's a leader for them, Kevin, on and off the court. A steady vet. Thank you, Doris. Yeah, one of the savviest players you'll see, no doubt. Watson dishes to West. Tipped away. And stolen by Williams. Jackson passes to Tolliver. Back to Jackson. And a missed layup. You know, in looking at the rise of these Pacers, it's hard to overlook the hiring of first-time head coach Frank Vogel, who's done a really nice job in leading that team. I think it all goes back to the front office, taking a team that could have been treading water and not realizing its potential and then molding and shaping them into a championship contender. West. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. David West has the strength and skill to score in the low post, and he's got a nice ability to handle the ball to get to his spot. And he does not back away from contact. As a matter of fact, he invites it. He loves playing through contact. Greg Monroe, he's checked in for the Pistons. The Pacers also changing it up. Miami comes in for Allen. Rodney Stuckey subbed in for C.J. Watson. Most any NBA player can make you pay when you leave them that wide open. That's why you have to stay alert on defense. You watch David West work in the post. He has some moves down there. Yeah, he's got that jump hook, beautiful turnaround jump shot. He also likes to use his strength to kind of knock the defender backwards and shoot that fadeaway jumper. And the shot is good from Stuckey. They started the game off tortoise-like, but their offense coming to life. Tortoise-like. Wow, Clark. Yeah, they're putting it together, but still trailing. Their offense is finally getting some traction. Nice work to get inside and draw the foul. Yeah, it's obvious. The defense not going to allow many easy layups. They're going to make you earn it from the line. Greg Monroe, 6'11", 250, the ability to play the four or the five spot, and his combination of size and skill makes him very coveted around the league. Detroit making a switch here. Drummond's checked in. The jump hook, and it's Hibbert missing. Good percentage shot, though. That's one they'll take any day of the week. That's his second personal foul. 
13. And Monroe, very left-hand dominant, much better scoring from that side of the floor. Yeah, and while being a lefty does throw defenders off, I think developing his right hand is something that will help him even get better as he moves forward. And so Monroe nails both of them. Well, the Pistons' acquisition of Josh Smith last season put Greg Monroe in a tight spot. Both players, natural power forwards. Neither one of them floor spacers, so it really was not a good fit, and that showed in the Pistons' record. He could have forced a tough inside shot, but made a terrific kick out to find the open jumper instead. Monroe with a screen on George. Screen by Monroe. Let's it go from 14. And it's Drummond missing. Well, even for a guy not known for his ability to attack the rim, I mean, he's got to lay that one in. Stucky into the lane. And he gets it to go. And despite playing in one of the league's most dysfunctional offenses, Greg Monroe remained effective as a scorer, I thought, last season. Yeah, I agree with you, Kevin. A slight downtick in his numbers, but not surprising given the circumstances you just highlighted. This guy's got a nice mid-range game and does a good job on the offensive glass, too. Here's Rudez. And there's a whistle that goes against Greg Monroe. That is his first foul of the game. Here is Stucky. Stucky left side. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Easy call there. No question about that one. You can hear the impact from where I am. Pacers have made four free throws from the line and missed two. Well, you look back at a season ago, this is a club that made 78% of its shots from the free throw line, so very comfortable with that stripe. Yeah, they had the kind of success from the line that would make any coach breathe a sigh of relief, guys. Williams, he's checked in for Detroit. Jennings comes in for Meeks. Jennings can't get it to go. Not a simple rebound. He made it look easy, but he did a good job in bodying up his man. The Pacers have shot five of eight from the foul line. The Pacers making a switch here. That one drops. He ties it up. Drummond sets the screen for Jennings. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. <laughs> And so it's tied as we head to halftime. And we'll be back for the second half following the break. Keep it right here on 2K Sports. Well, both sides have assessed what they need to do over the break in halftime. We'll see now if one can pull out away here in the third. What a performance from Jennings here. Ten point. He's done a little bit of work behind the arc. He's got a pair of three-pointers. Well, the defenders have that in the back of their minds now, too, so they're going to close out on him quicker. That should allow him to use the drive if he wants. Sean Williams is out there with Andre Drummond, and it's Karan Bump. Then there's Jennings, and it's Jackson in a, the two-spot. That's the group starting the second half for Stan Van Gundy. Well, if this game comes down to the rebounding battle, they'll be the ones coming out on top. Yeah, they've been really strong in the paint, battling the glass. Here's Stucky. Now that's how to finish the break. Throw down with force. Textbook example there of how to use defense to create offense. Yeah, beautiful transition play after the steal all the way to the basket. Wasted no time going from defense to offense. Yeah, it feels like they're starting to pick up the intensity as the game itself starts to get a little more tight and close. Well, it's been a while since Motor City has seen the playoffs on the basketball court, and it just appears as though they've been stuck in neutral the last few seasons. And with that shot, the Indiana lead is cut down now to just two points with that basket from Jackson. Jackson's got his second bucket. Well, that's one way to get your second half started on the right foot. An easy layup against some soft defense. 
Well, there was a time not that long ago when Rodney Stuckey was considered a rising star in the NBA, considered a steal with the 15th pick in the 2007 draft. But after back-to-back -back disappointing seasons, I think it's fair to ask, have we seen the best of Stuckey already? Monroe's checked in for Sean Williams. Jennings with the ball. Rodney Stuckey covering. Good. And it's nine points for Karan Butler. Up and in on every one of their first three shots to start the second half. And Rodney Stuckey was playing in a contract season. Started last season breaking his thumb in his car door. And that, that required surgery. He missed the first month. And as a result, he never did get back to the level he had hoped for. The Pacers have been shooting right around 75% of the line, 9 of 12 so far. So for the Pistons, Caldwell Pope, he's checked in for Reggie Jackson. And Dinwiddie subbed in for Brandon Jennings. They double him with George. Butler kicks to Caldwell Pope. Shot clock at six. Puts up the baby hook. A second chance effort. Drummond. Misses in close. Butler passes to Dinwiddie. Back to Butler. Pass to Dinwiddie. Into Drummond. And that one is hammered home. Kevin, I tell you what, when he gets to the rim like that, he's really hard to stop. Yeah, he can get up a, a few notches higher. There's no doubt. And yeah, that's how the game is played inside. I mean, if you can go over the top like that, you've got a great advantage. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Well, gentlemen, the Pacers head coach, Frank Vogel, has helped turn this team into a powerhouse. He's had a reputation for positivity, lifting his players up and boosting their confidence. As Paul George put it, coach has no shame in calling you out. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get embarrassed. No one wants that, Kevin. He'll call you out, Doris, that's for sure. Thanks. Indiana leading. Stuckey kicks to George. Basket is good. The assist from Stuckey. Stuckey's got his fourth assist in this one. The defense sagged off, and, you know, he did not hesitate to rise up and bury that three. Tayshawn Prince has checked in for Butler. West has checked in for Indiana. Hill comes in for Rodney Stuckey. They double him with West. One row with it. West picks him up. Inwitty's shot is off. Indiana leading by five. Outside Hill. Outside for George. Four on the clock. Stolen away. And here we go. The Pistons fast break. And it's sent back by George. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. Detroit making a switch here. Meeks is checked in. Now here is Hill. He's covered closely. Out of bounds. Detroit takes possession. Allen's checked in for the Pacers. Pistons trailed by five. Meeks dishes to Drummond. West with the steal. Hill has the open look. That three off the mark. You know, not only is the game neck and neck and tight, but the rebounding battle is too. Extremely close on the board. Yeah, both teams have really put in a terrific effort down low. The Indiana Pacers last season for the second year in a row, guys, the best defensive team in basketball, and it wasn't even close. That's good from Allen on the assist by Hill. A very good half for them from the field. They've got their shooting percentage up over 